How's it going everybody? I'm Ryan and this is Minus the Gym where we learn how to be healthy and fit at home. And in this video I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to learn frog stand to handstand, which for me was the most impressive skill. It's actually the one that convinced me to start training calisthenics. Alright, so let's jump in and see what it's all about. Real quick before we get started, I want to explain three prerequisites. All right? These are three things you should be able to do or be aware of before you pursue frog stand and handstand. Okay? The first thing is you should already have a stable frog stand. And I know that's pretty obvious, but I just want to mention it. All right? In order to do frog stand and handstand, you're going to have to get into a frog stand. So you need your, your frog stand to be stable and you should be comfortable in that position already. Now the second thing, and this is going to throw some people off, is I recommend that you already have a stable handstand. And I know a lot of people pursue frog stand to handstand in order to learn the handstand, right? They think, okay, I got frog stand, I'm just gonna pop up into a handstand and learn it that way. I don't recommend that approach. In fact, I tried that, it wasn't working out for me. So I learned the handstand a different way. And I actually have on my channel, a full handstand tutorial playlist, all right? It's four videos, like four big steps that bring you from frog stand all the way to handstand. So if you can't do a handstand yet, make sure you check out that playlist. I'll put one of those card things up on the screen because it's important that you have a handstand down. Think of it like this. If I tell you to go somewhere, if I say, go, go to that place, you're naturally going to ask, well, what place, right? It's the same thing. If you're trying to do frog stand handstand, but you don't know what the handstand feels like, if you don't have the neuromuscular coordination to hold a handstand yet, then you don't know what your destination is and you're not going to be able to land it even if you have that strength to press up. And third, I want you to be aware of shoulder impingement because that's something you might encounter if you have rounded shoulders or a forward head posture as a result of lots of computer usage, sitting at a desk all day like I did. Um, I started to experience some shoulder pain when I was pursuing this move, so I had to stop and I had to correct that before I could move on and continue my training. So if you encounter that, just be aware that I have a video, uh, it's called Shoulder Impingement Fix. All right, I'll put a link to that somewhere, maybe in the description or on the screen as well. And I want you to check out that video if at any point you experience shoulder pain while you're pursuing this move. So I'm gonna break this down into phases. And of course, let's start with phase one of the training. Each phase will have two exercises that you work on and I'll explain details at the end of this video. For the first exercise of phase one, you're going to get into a frog stand and you're going to do what I call frog stand press ups. Basically what you're going to do is let your scapula retract, meaning your shoulder blades come together to bring your face down to the ground and then press into the ground to raise your face back up. When you press, you're protracting the shoulder blades and moving them apart. The reason why you're going to work on this is the strength for this is going to be vital in holding yourself up for frog stand to handstand. So work on doing this as nice, slow, controlled reps, focusing on strength. And you want to target getting somewhere into the five to eight rep range. Once you're at that point, you'll be ready to move on to phase two. But there's also a second exercise in phase one, and that is good old pike push-ups. All right, I've talked about pike push-ups in other videos, but it involves getting into a pike position, bending at the elbows to lower your head down to the floor, and then once your head is right by the floor, press back up. And that pressing is really gonna tax the entire shoulder girdle. I'm talking not just the deltoids, you're gonna feel it in your upper back, in your upper traps, even in your triceps. With these, we wanna build up the strength quite a bit, so I'm gonna recommend you target getting at least 10 reps, all right? 10 good pike push-ups, along with the first exercise, the frog stand press-ups, and then you'll be ready to move on to phase two. Now in phase two, we're going to do a sort of continuation of both exercises. For the first exercise, get up into a frog stand and lean your weight forward towards the shoulders. What you're going to do is bring your knees together and then let them slowly come down to the ground. I call these frog stand float negatives, which is a lead up to the frog stand float that we'll do later. And you're going to keep doing this for reps. So you get back into a frog stand, lean forward, bring the knees together and lower down. Go ahead and rest a little bit, maybe just like five seconds or so between reps, because these are pretty difficult. And then get right back into a frog stand, lean forward, and then bring those knees up and together and slowly bring them down. 
Now, one of the things I want to mention about this exercise here is that because it's a negative, the most important aspect of it is that you focus on a slow and controlled movement. So when you lower down, when you bring those knees up and then you lower down, try to go as slow as you can down to the ground. That's what really counts. All right, and what you want to do is work on this somewhere in the five to eight rep range. Build up to that. But again, I'm going to emphasize that it's important that you try to come down slowly to build that strength. Now, aside from working on this in phase two, you're also going to work on good old pike push-ups. You're going to continue working on those. But the difference is by now you should be getting 10 reps, right? And if you're not, then continue working on it till you get 10 reps. And then you're going to take it to the next level and do decline pike push-ups. With decline pikes, you elevate your feet on a stool or a chair, a couch, an ottoman, any stable surface that can raise your feet up so you can get into a sharper pike. This allows you to press up more vertically, really emphasizing the shoulder girdle, so it's a great strength builder. And like the standard pike push-ups, try to build this up to 10 reps per set. And then at that point, you'll be ready for phase three. And this third phase will be the final one where we focus on building strength. So what you're gonna do is get into a frog stand, but do frog stand floats without the negative. What this involves is leaning forward, bringing those knees up, and then extending at the hips, trying to raise those knees up higher and hold the position for a few seconds. Make sure you come out of it safely back to your feet. One thing I wanna mention is that you will exhaust pretty quick with these, okay? Like this is my third attempt here when I was recording, and you can see it was not nearly as stable as the first and second one. So make sure you take long rests, focus on holding that position, and try to get at least five to eight seconds holding it. That's about all the strength you need to hold it and press up. And speaking of pressing up, the second exercise in phase three is back to wall handstand push-ups. I highly recommend these because they build total strength in the shoulder girdle to press yourself up into a handstand. Now some people call these headstand push-ups because your head touches the floor, whatever, the point is, you want to work on this in partial range of motion, gradually getting lower and lower until you build the strength to touch your head to the floor and press up. Focus on a wide grip with your hands at least shoulder width apart. And I know this sounds crazy, but all you really need is a good one or two reps, and then you'll have the strength to finally get frog stand to handstand. But be aware that this is not going to come right away. All right, so it's not quite as simple as you just get into a frog stand and then press up. I wish it was that simple, but really you have to break this down into steps. And that's how you're gonna take all that new strength that you've built up across the three phases and put them into work to make this skill happen. So let's break this down. First, what you're gonna do is you're gonna lean forward into a frog stand, make sure your weight is forward, and then come up into a frog stand float. Now you're already familiar with this, but we're gonna add some things to it. Three things actually. First you're gonna extend at the hips with your lower back. And then once you do that, as soon as you start extending at the hips, you're simultaneously gonna extend at the knees to straighten your legs. And then once your legs are pretty straight, like it feels like they're straight, you're gonna do a third thing by pressing into the ground with your shoulder girdle, all right, your whole upper back, your shoulders, your upper traps, just like you did with the back to wall handstand push-ups, and you're gonna press yourself up. All right, so let's watch these three things go into practice, hips, knees, and then press up, one, two, three, bam. And then you're up into a handstand, and then it's just a matter of solidifying your handstand with the three cues I taught in my handstand videos. So guys, I just wanna reiterate that even when you have the strength, it's gonna take some practice to get this skill down, so have patience. But once you get it, you'll see it's just a matter of getting up into that frog stand float, then you extend at the hips and knees and press up, and then lock out the handstand. Remember the three cues. You press with the serratus, and then you tilt the pelvis, and you tighten the quads and calves. So that's how you train for frog stand to handstand, but you're probably wondering, how often should I do this? Like, what's the frequency? What I found works best is about three times per week, okay? And I even did it twice per week for a while, so a little less. Um, but what's good about three times per week is that you have days off in between working on this so you recover and it's enough that you see pretty consistent and uh, I don't want to say fast, but the, the progress is happening and you see it continually happening. What you don't want to do is train too much because then your progress will just halt and you, you won't see continuous progress. So I would recommend no more than three times per week. 
Twice per week is good too. It'll just be a little slower progress. But what's important is that you allow enough time to rest. You can also incorporate this into your current split, all right? So if you're doing a push-pull legs split, you're doing push-pull legs, push-pull legs, rest day. So that's two push workouts a week. And then just do this on your two push days. And if you're doing upper body, lower body, and alternating between those, then do this on your upper body days. And guys, I wanna emphasize that this doesn't happen fast, okay? This is a, I'd put this skill somewhere around intermediate to advanced. It's definitely not a beginner skill. So when you pursue this, keep that in mind. It's gonna take weeks, if not months, of consistent training to get this down, but it's worth it. Once you get it, it's awesome and it's a great move to have. And of course, in case you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button down below. I'll also put something up here on the screen somewhere. And make sure you tap that bell icon so you don't miss an upload, all right? YouTube will notify you every time I upload a new video. And good luck training for frog stand to handstand, all right? I will talk to you in the next video.